Would you like to grow your fitness business in January? If the answer to that question is yes, then you need to listen to today's show because I'm going to run you through seven things you can do in January to grow your fitness business. I'm Matt Robinson, and this is the ProFit Podcast. When it comes to January, most fitness professionals expect that they're going to find themselves really busy. They think that the gyms are going to be full. There's going to be lots of inquiries for their services and business is going to boom. But often a lot of people find that this simply isn't the case. And that's not because the industry isn't booming. It's because people have rested on their laurels and assumed that business is going to find its way to them. When in reality, January is no different from any other month. The industry might be somewhat busier or people might be a little bit more interested in our industry, but the same rules apply. You've still got to go out there and build relationships with people and create a need and a desire for people to want to interact with you and your services. So what I am going to do for you today is I'm going to break down seven things you can do making sure that that then gives you the best chance of succeeding in January and through the rest of 2024. And I'm going to start with the most important of the seven, because if we get this first one right, you can then pick and choose which of the other six you want to do. And the first one, if you've done it properly, will help you with the other six. So we're going to unpack that one first, and then we will briefly discuss the other ones and how they relate to that first one that we've talked about. First thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is create an offer. Now, if you've listened to this show for any length of time, if you've followed me on Instagram and consumed any of my content there, if you've read any of my emails that I've sent out, I do mention this quite a lot. And it is something that you've seen mentioned quite a lot in like the business coaching industry and things like that. But just to hammer home the point, creating an offer does a lot for you in your business. The first thing is, is it gives you something to market other than your core service. If your marketing strategy is just to simply advertise the fact that you're a personal trainer or a coach or whatever you consider yourself and that you offer those services, you offer PT services, coaching services, that doesn't really get people off their seats and get them coming and wanting to know more about that. It's something that they feel they already understand and that's not really what I want. And that's probably true. What they actually want is a certain result rather than the service that gets them the result, if that makes sense. So creating an offer is going to give people a reason to interact with your business. And then depending on the structure of your offer, it also allows you to shorten the cycle usually required to get someone to buy. Because if you're going to spend some time with this person as part of the offer, you can create that no like, and trust factor far more quickly than if someone's going to have to consume your content online, speak to you a few times in the gym, exchange a few messages with you via DM, then come in for a consultation, then go away and think about it, then come back and speak to you again at some point, or maybe not at all. So we can shorten that sales cycle down and we can build that know, like, and trust much more quickly. Now, in terms of the offer itself, This will depend heavily on where you're at in your business and what stage you're at in building your fitness business. But as a general rule of thumb, what you would want to do is package together a shortened version of your bigger client experience and offer that at some sort of special rate. Now, this might sound like you're just discounting your PT service. I see it as slightly different from that because this is separate from your PT service. This is just giving them a taste of what you can do. So as part of this, you're probably still going to do some sort of mini consultation process, some mini assessment. You're going to give them a taste of what your training's like, what nutrition interventions you might consider for them. And you're just going to give them a snapshot over a few sessions of what your full service and that full client experience would be like for them. Think about it when you sign up for like software or even something like Netflix and they give you a a trial period there. So doing some sort of paid trial, we still want to make sure people are paying for this. That is a great way to give people to interact with your business, especially in January, 
because there are a lot of people out there that are probably still waiting to get paid. So if you've got a way of them interacting with your business at a price point that's more suitable, given the fact that they've not been paid yet, then that's, again, another reason for them to get involved now rather than waiting until a few weeks' time until they get paid, okay? So creating an offer is really important. I could do a full episode, a full day's training, a full workshop on building and creating an offer. It's something that I spend a lot of time doing with my one-to-one -one clients. But for the purposes of this episode, I just wanted to give you that brief overview there. So the first thing I want you to do is think about what can you package together as a little short-term taster of what you can do in your business. And just FYI, just giving someone a couple of taster sessions at a reduced price isn't going to be enough. They need to see the other elements of your business. They know you can train people. That is your job. You are a trainer. They need to see some of the other elements. They need to see some of the things that they weren't expecting to see, okay? That's why I recommend including things like some sort of movement assessment if you can and if you know how to do that. Maybe showing them some of your expertise in different areas that they might not have expected for a trainer. If you're going to bring them in for two sessions, three sessions, four sessions, and just beast them, then they can go and get that anywhere, okay? So we want to make sure that you're setting this up for a longer-term relationship and then giving them an insight as to why they should work with you, why you charge what you charge when it's full price. And that will give you a much better conversion rate on your sales. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to look at creating that offer. Keep it fairly simple if you can. If you do have any questions on it, reach out and ask me about them. You'll find me on Instagram at Matt Robinson PT. You can find me there. And with that one now taken care of, we can take a little quick look at the other six and how these potentially interact with that first one that's very, very important. Now, as I've already alluded to, these next six come off the back of this first one, and you could use all of these if you want to, or you could just pick a couple of them and do a really good job of them. It's completely up to you. So the second thing that you can do in January to grow your fitness business is you can do some sort of mini reactivation campaign. So if you've got leads that have inquired in the past, if you've got clients that have worked with you in the past, if you've got people that have been mentioned as, you know, potential interests and things like that, doing a reactivation campaign is a great way to bring people back in the door at the time at a time of year when they're probably thinking about their health and fitness more than ever, okay? And one of the best things you can do here is use this group of people as the first bunch of people that you approach regarding your new offer. So if you've got previous clients, if you've got previous leads, you can reach out to them via text, via email, via phone. You can speak to them if you see them in the gym, wherever it is, and you can let them know. You can say, you know, hope you're okay. Hope you've had a good Christmas, New Year, blah, blah, blah. Just to let you know, I am doing a special offer in January to give people a chance to re-engage with fitness and find the feet again in the gym. Here's what's included. If you're interested in that, then let me know and I'll get you booked in. You will need to let me know as soon as possible because I'm limiting the spaces and I'm predicting that people are going to want to take me up on this offer. Okay, so you can create a bit of scarcity around it, a bit of urgency, but it gives you a reason to reactivate these people and get back in touch with them. It's not like you're just saying, hi, are you interested in PT because it's January? You're giving them a reason to come back and re-engage in this moment. So reactivation is one of the things that I would look at, especially if you've been in the industry a, a short while now and you've got a, a list of people that you've interact, interacted with before or worked with before. This could be one of the biggest boosts in your business that you see if you do this correctly. And if you've managed to do a fairly decent job of staying in touch with these people anyway in the months leading up to January before they needed your help. Number three on the list is in relation to new gym members. Okay, so number three and number four are going to be in relation to new gym members. But number three is about doing inductions. Okay, now I've spoken in previous episodes about certain gym models. A lot of gym models now, especially if you're newer in the industry, require you to do hours for the gym. Some of those hours will be doing gym walkarounds, inductions, and things like that, okay? 
And I know that something that a lot of trainers struggle with is using an induction to then create interest in personal training services. But here's the thing. If you've created a good offer, now you've got something really obvious to offer to people if they've done an induction with you or if they've done a gym show around and they've shown signs that they might need some help and support, okay? So let's imagine you've got a load of new mem members flooding into the gym. There's more inductions than usual. There's more gym show arounds to do. I would be making sure that you put your name forwards to cover as many of those as you can, okay? It's going to be a time investment on your part, but what it means is you're going to be one of the first people that these new members ever get to meet in this gym especially if your gym doesn't have any sales staff, because some gyms now don't even have sales staff. You buy your membership online and then off you go, but they can book an induction online. So you could well be the very first person they've ever met when they go to that gym. Only member of staff they ever interact with. So get your name down to cover as many of those inductions as you can. You're going to follow the induction process that you need to do as part of your gym's protocols and what's set out as their structure. But you're going to make sure that during the induction, you're getting to find out a little bit about them regarding their goals, why they're coming to the gym, why they've started, what they're hoping to get out of it, what bits they're looking forward to using, what bits they maybe want to stay away from. Just trying to build that rapport with them. Then at the end of the induction, rather than just saying to them, you know, it was great to meet you today. If ever you need anything, let me know. I would be very, very tempted at that point to directly mention the fact that you've got an offer that you think would really help them. So you could say to them at the end of your induction, it's been a pleasure to meet you today. I've really enjoyed showing you around the gym and I've really enjoyed learning about you and your goals and what you're hoping to get out of the facility. Having spent a bit of time with you, I do feel that having that bit of extra support when you first start could really benefit you in the long term and enable you to get the most out of your gym experience. Would you mind if I told you quickly about something that I can do for you? that would really help you with that and save you a ton of money at the same time. Who is going to say no to that? Okay. Everyone's going to say yes. So you've almost got permission to mention your trial at this point. When they say yes, you can say to them, during January, I'm doing this trial offer or whatever your offer is. Here's what it costs. Here's what's involved. Here's what you're going to get. And I think this is going to set you up for success in the gym. Okay. That's then going to give you two, three, four more sessions with these people in order to build more trust with them, more rapport, show more of your expertise and get them to realize this is probably why this has never worked for me before. I've never had this support. I've never had this accountability. I've never had someone to show up for. I've never known what to do. Now I feel like I've got that because I'm working with this person. Okay. So that's something that if you've got the potential opportunity to do that, Using those gym inductions to do that is a really simple way to meet more people, pitch your offer, and worst case scenario, if people don't want it yet, you've now got a group of people that you've met that you wouldn't have met, and the only person they've got a relationship with in your gym is probably you, okay? So if ever they do need help, they're going to come to you, they know about your offer, and they can inquire about it at a later date. Strategy number four also involves new members, and this is more so for if your gym does have a sales team. So the gyms that I've been involved with always had sales teams. And one thing I think you can do in this situation, especially if you've got a good relationship with the sales team, is you can say to them, look, it's January, you're going to be signing up a lot of new members. I'm going to want to try and convert as many people as I can into new clients. I want to see my business grow as the gym gets busier. I was wondering if we could strike up a bit of a deal, okay? What you can then do is, is you can explain to the sales team about your offer, okay? You could just get them to hand out business cards and flyers and stuff, but let's be honest, it never works. You need to give something more direct. So you could say to the sales team, I'm running this promotion during January to get as many people engaged in fitness as possible and turning up to the gym regularly. Here's what's included. Here's what it costs. What you could then offer the sales team is you could say to them, I'm happy for you to, the, to offer this out to new members that join the gym when they buy a membership and anyone that buys this offer, I'm going to give you the money. Okay. Now that might sound like a big, a big thing to give away, 
even if the chunk of money isn't a large amount, they might only be paying 30, 40 pounds for this offer. And it might seem a lot to give that away and then do those sessions for free. But this is going to do a few things. Number one, you're suddenly going to go to the top of the priority list in terms of the sales team, because they're going to be earning more commission from you than they'll be getting from the gym for making gym sales. So they're going to want to make sure that every membership they sell, they also get someone buying your thing because they're essentially going to make money for doing very little because you're going to handle all the delivery. Okay. So that's something. Second thing is it sets you up for a really good long-term relationship with this person. So the offer that stands at the moment might not necessarily need to be like that forever, but it gets your foot in the door with them. Further down the line, you might move towards something that's more along the lines of if they send someone your way and that person signs up for your full service, then you'll give them a, a referral fee. And maybe at that point, you actually give them a bigger referral fee because this person has now paid you a much larger chunk of money because they've signed up as a full paying client. So it's up to you how you structure that deal. Don't make it complicated. Personally, I think the simplest thing to do is just give them the money that the client's going to pay you and just treat it as, right, I've now got a few hours to spend with this person who's already raised their hand and said they need help. My job now is to show them my expertise and convert them into a client. A lot of PTs would um, fight back against that idea. And one thing I'm always open and, you know, I'll, I'll say this to people's face is that you're more than happy to spend three or four hours DMing people back and forth. You will have people on your phone that you've spent hours over weeks back and forth regarding your services. Hi, I'm interested in PT. Can you tell me more about it? Okay, here's what's involved. What does it cost? Here's what it costs. When can I see you? Oh, I can do this, but I can't do that. And I can do then, but I can't do here. And before you know it, you've actually spent hours with these people and never got anywhere. At least in this situation, they are people that already come to your gym. They're members of the gym. They've already raised their hand and said, yes, I want some help from a PT. Now you've got the opportunity to convert them into a full paying client. You're not trying to convince them to come to the gym and start training and invest in a PT. They're already there. Okay. So I think you're far better spending three, four hours with these people than the same three, four hours randomly speaking to strangers online who may never convert, who may never even buy a gym membership, never mind come and train with you in the club or with you online. So I think that's something well worth thinking about and you can change the structure of that deal in the future, as I've mentioned, but for now, I would just keep it nice and simple. Number five on our list is something that myself and Paul have banged on about numerous times, and this is referrals. But again, going back to our first point on this list, what you could do here regarding referrals is you could approach it slightly differently at this time of year. And what you could do is you could mention to your clients that, you know, you're in a position where you want to grow your business. You want to take on a few more people and that you understand that January is the time of year when people are considering their health and fitness a bit more, you know, it's more of a priority for them. So you could say to your clients, is there anyone that you know that would potentially benefit from a service like mine that would, you know, benefit from having a coach or a trainer? Most people are going to know somebody. What you could then say to them is say, right, well, what I can do because they're a friend or a family member of yours is I can give them this special deal. I can do them this paid trial or whatever the offer is that you've put together. And that would give them the opportunity to come in, see what it's like, experience some of the stuff you've experienced. And there's no risk involved to them at all because it's, it's such a low fee. It gives them the opportunity to taste it without that huge investment up front. So this is a great way to bring more referrals into your business and have the opportunity to spend a bit more time with them. Because usually when we get referrals, it might just be that you do a consultation with the person, or it might just be that you do a taster session with the person. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you will definitely sign people up doing that. But imagine if you had two, three, four sessions with this person, you could show them so much more and let them experience so much more. And by the time they finish that, they'll have been paid. They'll have, you know, settled down at work again, back into a routine. They're probably in a bit of a better position to make a decision about taking on PT as a more long-term strategy for their health and fitness. So using your offer to get referrals is something that I think you can do. It's sort of two strategies there that you can stack together. 
if you haven't got an offer or you, you don't believe in creating an offer, then still go after the referrals and just make your clients aware. Yes, January is busy, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be flooded with new business. If you've got anyone that you know that's looking at getting involved, please let me know. I'm happy to do some taster sessions with them or whatever you're willing to do and get them in that way. But I think you can stack the referrals piece together with the offer creation and hopefully that will have a much bigger impact in your business. Number six on our list. This is the first one that probably relates to any sort of online activity. Obviously, we are in a digital age. We do need online presence, social media presence. We never really prioritize it on this podcast. We do believe there's other stuff that you should be taking care of first. But obviously, we do massively see the importance of it. It's something I engage with a lot and try and leverage as much as I can. And it's something that I get the coaches I work with to do as well. So number six is regarding online. And again, we're going to stack this with that first thing that we spoke about. What I would like you to do with your online strategy, your social media strategy, is I want you to be consistent with delivering value because again, people spending time online are going to be seeing a lot from fitness people over the coming weeks and months. They need a reason to engage with you. So make sure you're creating some good, valuable content. Don't spend all day making it. You've got other things to be doing, but where you can put some content on there and you know, be engaging. But then what you can do is, is you can use that online platform to let your audience know about this offer that you've created. So again, it gives you a reason to create a clear call to action. Quite often with social media, trainers are very good at giving information and educating people, but they're very poor at creating strong calls to action. They might just put something like DM me for more information. And there's a time and a place for that because you don't always want to be pushy or salesy. But at the same time, if you never clearly ask someone if they want to engage with your business, they never get the opportunity to say yes. So I would recommend that if you are putting out content regularly on your social media platform through January, you should probably be posting about this offer that you've created at least once a week. You want it to be something that they get to see frequently because not everyone's going to see it. You want to give everyone a chance to see it at least once or twice. So I would make sure that you've got a dedicated post about your offer each week. And I would also potentially double up on that and make sure that you mention it on your stories as well on a different day than when you post about it on your main feeds. Okay. So deliver the value first, but then make sure you've got the strong, strong call to actions in there as well. And the best way you think you can do that is integrate that offer that you'll have created because that just gives you something that you can then channel all of your leads into. It means that if you've got people coming in from reactivations, from referrals, from inductions, from the sales team, from online, they're all coming from different places, but your process will remain the same. It won't be overwhelming because you might have five, six, 10 people that are interested in this offer across these different places where you're generating leads. But you're confident that, well, they're all going to go through pretty much the same thing. It's not like I'm having to build 10 different approaches to this. It's a set system that you can repeat and rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Okay. So value online through your content with a strong call to action is going to be very important. Do the same if you've got any sort of email list or any other platforms that you use out there, whatever your platform is, choose your platform and commit to being really consistent on it. And like I say, do not forget those call to actions because without those people are just going to move on to the next fitness person who has got a call to action and they'll go and work with those instead. This brings us nicely onto our final one on the list. This has actually got nothing to do with number one. This is the only one that doesn't really interact with that at all. Although you could still layer it in there somewhere, but number seven is just a reminder about the importance of interaction. Regardless of whether you're spending time in the gym, online, or both, you need to make sure that when you are in those environments, you are interacting with people. You have to be creating conversations. It's no good just being there and looking like a spare part. It's no good being on social media and just doom scrolling for an hour. You need to be creating conversations. You need to be interacting with people. You need to be engaging with people because if you aren't, you are going to create absolutely nothing. So that's what you need to do. If you were going to 
use the the offer, the first thing that we spoke about as part of this, then the simplest way to think about it is let's say, for example, you're in the gym and you're doing your hours for the gym or you've got a bit of spare time. You can be out on the gym floor speaking to people. And if you get any sort of green light from someone, which is when someone starts to ask you about training and about your service, this is where you can pitch them your offer. You can sort of say to them, oh, well, if this is something you're really interested in, I've actually got something that could help you massively with this. What I can do for you is I can give you this special deal. It'll give you a chance to experience X, Y, and Z, and I can show you A, B, and C, and then it'll give you a really good taste of what's involved in my kind of service. Is that something you're interested in? You can do a similar thing online. If you've started speaking to someone online and you've, you know, exchanged a few DMs, you could say to them, step one of engaging with my service or finding out more about what I do is to sign up for this trial offer. And if someone says no to that because they don't want to pay for it, then that's fine. I would think at that point, they're not really that interested. Someone's not willing to pay a small fee to find out more about this service and actually engage with it and try it out. Then they're not interested at all. They've got to be willing to put a little bit of skin in the game, in my opinion. Okay. So interaction in the gym or online, wherever you're most likely to do it, it's still very important. That never changes at all, ever across the year, especially in January. You could argue that it's easier to interact in January because there should be more people around and more people willing to talk about health and fitness because it's higher up their priority list. So make sure you're interacting with people as much as you can. And then if you really want to, you can layer in that offer as we've spoken about and give people the chance to interact with that. Okay, so that's our list. That's our seven things that you can do to grow in January. And I'm just going to quickly run through them all again so that you get a little snapshot of each again. So number one was to create an offer. This was a central piece to what we were talking about today. Number two was reactivations, using your offer to create reactivations. Number three was new member inductions. So putting yourself forward to do as many of those, pitch your offer at the end. Number four was new members through the sales team. So using your offer as something the sales team can sell in order to get a bigger commission. Number five, referrals, using your current client base to ask them if they've got anyone that's interested in training. And again, use the offer if you need to, to generate that referral and give someone a reason to come and train. Number six was about what you do online and making sure that you're giving consistent value, but then you're also layering, layering on top of that, those strong call to actions, which in this case, again, could be that offer that you've created. Number seven, was interactions, making sure that you are speaking to as many new people as possible, creating conversations, creating engagement in the gym and online so that you're giving yourself the best chance of getting in front of people that are ready to invest in a service like yours. And again, if you wanted to, you could then offer them this trial offer or whatever you put together as an option for them to get started. And that's all for today's show. I hope that you found that really useful. If you've got any questions that you want to ask about, as I mentioned earlier in the show, the best place to come and interact with me is probably over on Instagram. My handle is at Matt Robinson PT. Picture of my face on a red background. I know that there's a few Matt Robinsons that show up when you search for that, but I'm the one that's picture of my head, red background. Hopefully you should stand out. You should be able to find me there. You can drop me a DM ask me any questions and you will also find that if you want some extra help during January, if you head over to my bio link, there's something in there that I've never really mentioned on the podcast before. I've actually got a PDF all about sales. So if you go to the link in my bio, there's something called sales mastery. You can download that for free. And again, given the fact that people are going to want to grow their business in January, that might be a good opportunity for you to get a little bit of extra help around a subject that people often struggle with. So if you want to learn more about how to sell your services properly, how to put it together properly, and how to think about sales in a more confident way so that you create more conversions in your business, then I would recommend that while you're over there, go and grab a free copy of that. And that should help you massively, especially with the implementation of some of the things that we've spoken about today. Until next time, have a good one and let's smash January. <laughs>